Hi, I'm Michael Sankey. I'm the current president of the Australasian Council on Open Distance and E-Learning, otherwise known as ACO. Uh, this is just a very quick snapshot of what we've been up to in 2020. A uh, pretty amazing year uh, by anyone's standards. But first, I would like to just acknowledge country. So I acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, waters and community. And I pay respect to our cultures, country and elders past, present and emerging. And of course, to our New Zealand colleagues, kia ora. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, continued support and friendship uh, over this time, uh, which has been an amazing 2020. Uh, we started uh, 2020 in Canberra in March uh, with a, our only face-to-face -face meeting of the year down there. Uh, Jeffrey Chris posted us and uh, it was a great event we had uh, looking at e-assessment. And of course, Jeffrey uh, is an expert in the area of e-assessment. And uh, we had a great meeting there. Little did we know that this was going to be so timely as COVID was just starting to hit in Australia. And I think it was, that was the last flight I took uh, back in March and I haven't been on a plane since. And so it's been an amazing year, uh, but a fantastic event we had in Canberra uh, back down there in March. We were, had been planning to host the, uh, a new reality uh, conference up in Griffith here, uh, but that wasn't to be. It had to then be a virtual meeting. And so we did host that in June online and had a fantastic uh, uh, number of environments set up and a great range of speakers uh, talking about all the different things that they're doing in the AR, VR, XR, MR space, mixed reality space. And so you can access those resources uh, from our ACODE website uh, under the uh, new reality uh, banner on the resources area there under the workshops. And so uh, what we found out in Canberra was there's a number of institutions who were moving fairly quickly into the online space in terms of invigilation. And so we thought we might do a survey of our uh, member institutions. In fact, every public university in Australia and New Zealand participated in this activity. And so we had uh, 47 uh, institutions participate in this survey, uh, which we ran in conjunction with Cordit. And we found that only about half the institutions at the end of semester one or trimester one in our particular case, uh, were running invigilation software uh, for, their, uh, for their virtual exams. The other half weren't. They decided to do other things with their examinations, which was fantastic. Uh, some lessons are being learnt by many institutions about what needs to be examined online and what doesn't need to be examined online in an invigilated space. So watch this space. Uh, we're learning a lot of lessons very quickly about this. Uh, we also, uh, last year, had, did a, a white paper on uh, micro-credentialing. And of course, since then, of course COVID's hit, uh, the, the federal government has given a whole lot of funding to micro-credential and short courses and we thought we'd better do an update. So Ratner and I did an update to the paper we did last year, the white paper we did last year and produced this uh, further white paper in August there. And it's a, a great little read in terms of who's doing what, how that's sh changed over uh, the last year. And of course we'll continue that work as long as we can uh, to, uh, to watch this dynamic space grow. We then moved, of course, we were going to have our face-to-face -face benchmarking activity in Brisbane. And of course, that didn't happen, of course. Uh, so we uh, moved that to online also. And we ran uh, one benchmark a week for eight weeks, in, in essence. And uh, that was a great activity for all of us to be in there. Uh, ACO developed a new tool, online benchmarking tool, in our 0365 environment, our Teams environment, which uh, little power app there to do this. Uh, and we're very thankful for the work of Don uh, who did the, built this for us. Uh, and we then, this was our Griffith crew <coughs> doing the internal benchmarking activity. And of course, then we all got together uh, in the online space to do the uh, full benchmarking activity. So great event. Uh, we didn't, of course, didn't have as many uh, institutions participating as in previous years, but that is completely understandable. But nevertheless, uh, a great activity for those that did participate. And we look forward to uh, running this again in two years time. Because of the whole what was happening this year, I thought it was important to hear from some of the learning leaders around the country, uh, both countries, uh, both Australia and New Zealand. And so I started up the, the vodcast series, the Learning Leaders vodcast series. And uh, many of those have happened over the last six to eight, six months. And uh, these, can be, these can be accessed, if you haven't seen them, uh, from the ACODE website or through our YouTube channel. And uh, this first one, of course, we did was with Shirley uh, down at UTS there. Uh, great interview we had with her uh, 
looking at what were the opportunities she saw in higher education through the use of technology hence learning and the democratization of education and things like that so a range of different topics uh, we're dealing with in the vodcast series and that will continue uh, next year the um, we also ran for the second time uh, our ACODE mentoring scheme, the ACODE Leadership and Technology Enhanced Learning Mentoring Scheme. And uh, this again has been a great event. Uh, last year we, we started off fairly slowly and now we've started, uh, really ramped it up this year and had a, a great number of pairs, uh, mentors and mentees working together throughout the year. This was a screen grab of a Zoom session we had with Dominique Parrish who was uh, leading us through some, some concepts. Um, at one point in the, in the event and so look forward to running that again next year and hope that you if you haven't been involved yet either as a mentor or a mentee that you will put your hand up uh, next year for that. Uh, it is focusing on leadership unlike the Ascolite one which is more about technology and it's learning more generally this this one is about leadership and so looking to develop leaders uh, for technology and learning. Uh, and of course uh, not too long ago uh, just four weeks ago now we had uh, a code uh, 83, which was hosted for us by Curtin, and they did a great job pulling us all together, put together a fantastic program uh, of speakers and activities for us uh, during the day. And uh, thank you so much for all those who participated, who presented, and for and uh, all the conversations and things that happened. Uh, there was recordings of those sessions online, and there are also all the resources that were uh, put up there as well, the PowerPoint. So it's all there for you to access uh, through the workshops area under the resources uh, within uh, the ACODE site. So uh, we, to finish off the year, <coughs> we had the ACODE Tell Awards. And we've run this every second year and uh, looking for those who are doing some innovative stuff in the area of technology enhanced learning. And this year, unanimously, the judges found that the RefQuest uh, the RefQuest uh, environment, uh, which was created by Western Sydney University, uh, won the ACODE Tell Award for uh, 2020. It's a fantastic little uh, uh, interactive gaming environment to help students understand referencing. And so they did that in conjunction with the library down there in Western Sydney. So it was a great joint effort and uh, very reusable uh, in many, many ways. So just a, a couple of little tidbits at the end here. Uh, we, are, we did, as if you don't know already, uh, most of you have already paid this, so it's pretty old news really, that uh, we are reducing the fees for 2021. We'd reduced them by $1,000 because we're not doing the face-to-face uh, -face meetings again this year. We have unfortunately had to postpone uh, the LTLI and the Theta conference for a year, basically because of uh, everybody's travels budgets are shot for 2021. So uh, we thought it was better to postpone. Uh, and so we are looking to host that uh, in 2022 now, not 2021, and also the Theta Conference in 2022 will be held in Perth. So that's just been deferred for a year. But we will in 2021 be doing uh, another leadership thing. Uh, we're not fully clear what that means yet, but look out for that, uh, because we don't want to let go of that notion of, of uh, supporting leaders and things of like that. Of course, there's the mentoring scheme, but we want to actually have a bit of more focus on that as well. Uh, so uh, in March next year, uh, CQU, Central Queensland University, or CQ University, will be hosting our ACODE 83, and we look forward to working with them to pull this off. Uh, later in the year, mid-year, uh, UniSA, University of South Australia, will be hosting ACODE 43, sorry, <laughs> 84, and uh, ACODE 85 will be hosted by ANU. Uh, all these will be online events because of the, the notion of the travel budgets being shot for next year, and but, you know, Hopefully in 2022, we'll all be back uh, in uh, working towards face-to-face -to -face environments with a mixture. So I don't think we'll never ever get back to exactly the same thing. Uh, we'll probably find some more hybrid models uh, working for us. So let's see what happens. Look, I do want to thank you for all those who have been involved in the work this year. Uh, these things just don't happen because there are a few people. It happens because a lot of people are putting in effort and working towards uh, the common goals that we have in ACODE. And so uh, it's now time for a well-deserved break. You've done so well this year. 2020 has been a hell of a year. And so I'm looking forward to a bit of a break uh, over the rest of December and January. And I hope you are too. I'm going to spend a bit of time with family. Uh, but it would be remiss of me if I didn't thank, uh, say the last thank you for our executive. Uh, the executive have been a fantastic uh, bunch 
to work with and to take this organisation forward. And uh, we really hope you've enjoyed the activities we've run in 2020 and we look forward to working with you again in 2021. So all the best, have a great festive season and I look forward to connecting with you in 2021. Thank you.